Here is what is making you old and stiff. If you got achy joints, if things are just not moving right in the morning or later in the day, these are the primary causes of what is making you stiff. I see people make these mistakes very, very often. The ratios, the foods, the things I'm gonna show you right now can help you to uncover why the stiffness, remove it from your body, eliminate it, and I'll give you a direct action plan at the end of this video with a bonus training on how you can undo some of this. So let's dive into it. Number one uh, thing I wanna talk about when it comes to the stiffness in the body, carbs should be without set, okay? So sugar going in, you can feel this after you eat, you eat a big carb load, you eat a big pasta dinner, you're very stiff, it creates a lot of inflammation. I'm gonna assume you know that one. If you need help there, I'm gonna talk about it at the end uh, and kind of give you a game plan of how you can really reduce that and get it under control. But that aside, the number one thing I wanna talk about is vitamin K2, okay? Now, inside of your system, Calcium goes in. This is why I do not recommend taking a lot of extra calcium via supplement. I see a lot of women, especially, taking 600 to 1200 milligrams of calcium a day. I would not recommend that because when a lot of calcium gets into your body, if it does not get properly placed, it builds up like the white moldy, uh, white calcium buildups of your shower, all right? The same thing is with iron, it rusts. Uh, these build up and these deposits build up inside of your system and they can make you very, very stiff. So the main one I wanna focus on is calcium. Uh, when there's calcium inside of your body, all right, your body in your uh, has to figure out, your body has to figure out how to take it from the blood and put it into the blood vessels. So it is vitamin D3's job to transport calcium into your blood vessels. All right, not D2, D3, you can get it from the sun is a great way to do it, or you can supplement with a vitamin D3. But this is why it's also very important to be taking vitamin K2 with D3 supplements, all right? And the main uh, nutrients I wanna talk about when it comes to stiffness is K2 because what K2 does, it is then responsible for taking it from the arteries and moving it to the bone. Not the greatest drawing of a bone, but I tried. Okay, so the K2 though moves it from the arteries to the bones. Here's why this is significant. Studies show that when taking proper amounts of K2, the arteries are anywhere from 10% less stiff. Some studies show even higher than that. So it's just helping the arteries, the blood vessels, carrying all your nutrients in the body, the inflammation, it's what powering your muscles to be less stiff. When your arteries are less stiff, you are less stiff. And then obviously the, the concern overall is the stiffening of the arteries, some kind of heart related issue, K2, not K1, not can be con to be confused with K1, K2 is vitally important for that. This can be gotten through fermented foods. So I love apple cider vinegar, uh, I love um, sauerkraut for this, uh, kimchi, kefir, um, I mean, yogurt, I don't usually recommend, it's too much sugar. Uh, I would also look at raw cheeses. These are great sources of vitamin K2. You can supplement with it as well. The primary two forms of vitamin K2 you will see, MK4 and MK7. Both have good benefits inside of the system. Both can be beneficial and sourced properly. Putting that into the system at a dose of uh, at least a maybe a 20 to one for the amount of vitamin D3 that you're taking. So if you are taking uh, 2000 IUs of vitamin D3 a day, take at least 100 micrograms of K2. Uh, in, in some ways, it's even 10 to one, where if you're taking 2000 IUs of D3, you could be taking 200 micrograms of K2. So kind of use it as a ratio if you're taking it with D3. Otherwise, anywhere between 200 micrograms and 800 micrograms a day would be a good idea to reduce the stiffness because of where it's gonna place calcium, in the bones, not in your arteries. Now, the second main culprit in America especially for stiffness are rancid oils. Rancid oils congest the system, clog up the cells, create a lot of inflammation. They're anti-nutrients. This inflammation and this congestion leads to a lot of stiffness, kind of swells the cells. Toxins are not able to move out of the cells. Nutrients are not able to move in. Here's your primary culprits. Cottonseed oil, corn oil, soybean oil, vegetable oil, canola oil, to name a few. I talk about this extensively uh, in my books. I teach on it a lot. Rancid oils are, in my opinion, a bigger problem than sugar inside America, however, they get a fraction of the attention.
And so these rancid oils, when you put them into your system, they've been processed so much to take a cotton seed and turn it into an oil that has changed the chemical makeup of the oil. So when it hits your system, your body does not recognize it. It is rancid, it is this foreign. It's not able to use the nutrients and the healthy fats of it nor break it down properly. Some of these stay inside of your body for a half a year or longer. They just build up in you. So you can think McDonald's French fry when you're thinking these kind of rancid oils. If you drop one of those underneath your seat, you can find it six months later and it looks like you just bought it. That's the same stuff that is sitting inside of your arteries, inside of your blood vessels, inside of your tissues, and it causes a lot of stiffness. So changing to real oils, something you can squeeze and an oil drops out, an olive, an avocado, coconut oil, these things can be easily digested. They don't congest the cells. These are the ones that my family primarily uses and what I recommend as real oils, okay? Now, moving on from there, what ties directly into rancid oils is our omega ratio. Now this is your omega-6 to omega-3. There are, of course, sevens and nines that are vital to the body, but it's the sixes and the threes that control primarily the amount of inflammation and stiffness inside of your body. If you wanna feel old really fast, increase your inflammation. If you wanna revive youthfulness and energy, decrease it, and here's how it's done. Traditional foods in America, because of our rancid oils, because of meat from conventional sources, such as the McDonald's hamburger, or uh, you know, quick versions of these meats and these foods end up getting a lot of processing. The animal itself ends up having a higher diet of inflammatory foods, such as grains instead of grass for a cow, and it makes the animal inflamed. The more inflamed the animal is, the more inflamed the oil is that we just talked about, and the more inflamed you're gonna be because they contain a high amount of omega-6s. If you don't counteract this and eat higher amounts of omega-3s, you can see the size difference, the gap of the daily intake where we get a lot of omega-6s and very little omega-3s. So that gap is inflammation. Now, how do we undo this? Well, one way would be to increase omega-3s, and you can do that, which I showed at the dotted line here, and take more omega-3s in the form of fish oil. Uh, fish is gonna contain DHA and EPA. These are my two favorite omega-3s because studies show they have the biggest reduction in inflammation inside of the system. You can also get ALA from foods like flaxseed, chia seeds, some of my favorites as well. So we do wanna increase the amount of omega-3s we are eating, but even more importantly, decrease the amount of omega-6s. And the way this is done is to clean up your meat, grass-fed, free-range, wild-caught when it comes to beef, chicken, and fish. And then, of course, start to move your rancid oils. That will lower this omega-6 count. If you can get those two equal inside of your body, stiffness will be gone. Inflammation will be gone. If you can even get the omega-6s to trim down close to half the size the omega-3 is compared to the 6, you'll radically reduce the amount of inflammation and the amount of stiffness inside of your body. So the ratio of omega-3s and 6s, very important. So then we move to the final part of this, and this is overconsumption of food. The fourth main reason why we get so stiff is we are simply overeating. Our body has too much energy in it. The liver has too much to process. The digestive system is constantly processing food as opposed to healing us. And our body is expending 2x, 3x the amount of energy on digesting food because we eat large meals two to three times a day that are packed with processed foods such as bad oils and carbohydrates. Our body is constantly working. That energy is going there instead of healing your inflammation and healing your stiffness. The byproduct of all that fuel that has to be pro processed is like diesel fuel spraying all over your body. You ever driven behind a large truck while you're driving down the interstate or the road <laughs> and it comes right in through the air conditioner. Woo, you can smell that, you can get that kind of soot, that kind of put off is what your body's doing when it's processing constant food over consumption, carbohydrates and bad fats. So here's a simple plan to get this under control. If you've never tried rotational fasting, I would highly recommend it. In fact, I put a training down below for you to really understand this whole concept. But basically you are slowly getting your body off over consuming. And you can do this through four simple steps. First week, half size the size of your breakfast. Don't change anything else. Try to clean up your uh, choices, make better choices of food, but just cut down breakfast half the size. The second week, skip breakfast, which would be called intermittent fasting. Don't eat until lunch. 
have your normal foods after that, try to make better choices, move into week three. Week three, you skip breakfast, intermittent fasting, but then you curb down and try to half size dinner. You can have a normal lunch, enjoy it, uh, eat full on, but then half size the meal later in the day. Where this becomes really crucial is now, not only are you getting the benefit of less food in the morning, but later in your day, your body's not going to sleep when your body heals and it's processing excess food. One of the biggest dip disruptors of sleep, one of the biggest disruptors of HRV, which is your heart rate variability, which is what heals your system, your sympathetic healing nervous system, uh, is the system that needs to kick in at night when you're resting, not stressing, not overeating, when you need to heal. So your nervous system is the only system in the body that speeds up at night, and that's actually to, designed to heal you. So if we can curb consumption, especially in the latter part of the day, we get way more benefit for stiffness, inflammation, and the healing overall. Finally, you move into a one full day fast. One day out of the month, abstaining from food, you could have juice, you could have collagen or bone broth or even coffee, that would be fine, or abstaining from carbohydrates, we're abstaining um, from any kind of higher carbohydrate foods and food in general gives your system a break for one day to go into cleanup mode. That is a simple way to implement rotational fasting. You don't plateau with that regimen. That can be repeated every single month, or if you want the more advanced and get deeper into rotational fasting of how you can do intermittent curbing consumption with rotational fasting so you don't plateau, check out the training that I uh, did below. In fact, I made a video on it, and I put it right here for you to check out as a next step.